Oh, Blackie, this is the life. Alone with you in a handsome cab at 2 a.m. Who could want anything better? <laughs> the horse, maybe. He may be smart and prefer his bed to the park. <laughs> Don't you know it was 2 a.m.? I can tell by the stars. And the position of the moon. And besides, I just looked at my watch. <laughs> well, at least you've impressed our driver. Listen to him <laughs> chuckle. Uh, well, I ain't impressed with her telling time of the moon and stars, son. I'm impressed because you're Boston Blackie. You see? You are, ain't you? Yes, but don't tell your horse. He might quit. <laughs> and you must be Miss Wesley, ain't you, lady? <laughs> my main fault is I'm curious. Yes, driver, I'm Miss Wesley. That's my main fault, too. <laughs> and as much as it's 2 o'clock, Mary, I think we'd better head for the nearest exit to town. Let's get out of the park, driver. All right, Mr. Blackie. Oh, and I was just beginning to enjoy this. Wait a minute. Do I hear an organ somewhere? It's the merry-go-round over there. Oh, yes, it is. See the light shining through the trees? Yes, I do. The merry-go-round running wide open at 2 o'clock in the morning? This is crazy. Hold it, driver. Sure, sure. Oh, oh now, oh now, oh up there. <laughs> Wait here a minute, driver. Come on, Mary. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, but, but I, I... The carousel shouldn't be running at this time of night. It should be closed up tight by sundown. Come on. All right. You'll wait for us, driver? Sure thing, Mr. Blackie. Sure thing. Here's a path through the hedge, Mary. Yeah, I see it. Thanks. Hey. Look at the carousel. It's turning. Yeah, is that funny? I'll say. I wonder where the operator is. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be anybody. Mary, there's not a soul here. Nobody in sight. No, there doesn't seem to be. No, I can't understand that, Blackie. The lights are on, the organ's playing, and the carousel is turning. And yet... Yet there isn't anyone around. This merry-go-round in front of us has a mystery in back of it. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Blackie, I don't get this at all. I don't either, Mary, but it gets me. Nobody's on any of the horses. Look, look. There is a man on one of the horses. There, you see, coming round from the back. Oh, I see him. He'll be right in front of us in a minute. Hey, you! He's asleep. I'll jump on and wake him up. Careful, darling. Oh, don't worry. I used to hop only freight trains when I was a kid. Is the man on the horse asleep? Wait till I come around again and I'll tell you. Well, Blackie, what about the man? Riding this wooden horse has a bullet in his head. Hello? Good morning, Inspector Faraday. Uh, Good morning, Inspector. This is Blackie. Morning. Blackie? Hey, what's the idea? dark out. But it's still morning, three o'clock in the morning. Look, you, can I even get a good night's sleep? No, can you with a conscience as guilty as yours? But look, Faraday, I've got a little job for you. Well, save it for morning. By morning, I'll have it finished myself. What are you raving about, Blackie? Murder, Faraday. There's a body with a bullet in its head riding a wooden horse on the merry-go-round in the park. A body dressed in a riding habit. Blackie, you feel all right? Just fine, Faraday. Uh, nothing, uh... Nothing's the matter with you at all. Not a thing. Then stop that nonsense and start talking sense. I don't blame you, Inspector Old Man. This sounds ridiculous even to me. And it'll sound more ridiculous when I tell you who the corpse is. Or was. Well? John Van Dorn, the millionaire sportsman. The best-known horseman in New York? And he's found dead on a wooden horse on a merry-go-round? Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Seems silly to me, too, Faraday, but believe me, I'm serious. He's going around and around and around. Maggie, you're not kidding. I'm dead serious, comma. But Van Dorn isn't dead serious, semicolon. He's dead, period. Yes? Good morning. Are you Peter Carson? Yes. You own the carousel in the park? Yep, I own it and I run it. What about it? I'm Boston Blackie. May I come in? Sure. Thanks. You want to know about John Van Dorn's murder, don't you? Yes, I do. You think I know something, huh? You might. 
What makes you think so? A little information I picked up at the Park Commission before I came to see him. You don't know anything about me. No? Well, I know your carousel was just about to be closed. Oh? And I know it was on a complaint from John Van Dorn that the Park Commission was going to close it. So? So you had a pretty good reason to kill Van Dorn, don't you agree? Uh, sit down. I'll tell you the little bit I know about this. You know, uh, just a little bit? Maybe you might think it's a lot. Let's hear it. Well, last night I... Never mind the knock on the door. Go on. Well, last night I was just... I'll talk to this guy, Blackie. Oh, good morning, Inspector. The police? Yes, Carson, but don't judge the entire force by Faraday here. He's a holdover from the days before the cops were required to think. Quiet, Blackie. Uh, Carson, I'm investigating the murder of John Van Dorn. What do you know about it? Nothing, Inspector. Uh-oh. What do you mean by oh oh, Blackie? Oh oh, zero zero, nothing nothing, which is exactly what you're going to get out of Carson. Blackie, where are we going? To see Mrs. Van Dorn, the dead man's wife. Oh. Uh, what'd you find out from Pete Carson, the owner of the carousel? Nothing, Mary. Faraday walked in just as he was about to tell me something. Uh oh. With one look at the inspector, and he got locked jaw. What do you think he was going to tell you? I don't know. I wish somebody would tell me something. This thing's crazy, Mary. One of the city's best known horsemen is found dead in full riding habit and riding a wooden horse. It's fantastic, all right. Fantastic. It's weird. Then Dawn died that way by coincidence, or we're dealing with a murderer with a strange sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's Van Dorn's house. Oh, it's a beautiful place, isn't it? Van Dorn had a beautiful bank account. Beautiful wife, too? We'll soon find out. That I'm afraid of. Yes? I'd like to see Mrs. Van Dorn, please. She's not in. It's Tito, Harry. Tell it's not Tito, Blanche. No, it's not, but Mrs. Van Dorn is in, and so are we. All right, then. Mrs. Van Dorn, these two are here to see you. You want to see me? Yes, Mrs. Van Dorn, and if you don't mind... It's about your husband's death. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. You have to talk to my lawyer, Mr. Wilcox, about that. And where will I find him? I'm Wilcox. Well, this is easier than I thought. I'm investigating Mr. Van Dorn's death. Can you tell me anything about it, Wilcox? No, and I think you've got a lot of nerve breaking in here and talking about this unfortunate thing in front of Mrs. Van Dorn. I'm sorry, but investigations have to be made. Her husband was murdered, and I'd like to help find the killer. Are you the police? No, he's Boston Blackie, Mr. Wilcox. He's better than the police. <laughs> Not better, Mary, just luckier. Mrs. Van Dorn, you want me to find your husband's killer, don't you? Of course, but must we talk about it just now? The sooner I get the facts, the sooner the killer might be caught. That may be true, Blackie, but out of respect to the widow, I'll have to ask you to come here with your questions some other time. Some other time may be too late, Wilcox. Mrs. Van Dorn... Your husband was rather prominent socially, wasn't he? His name was well known in social and business circles, yes. How did he make his living? I understand he was quite wealthy. Oh, not terribly. He had a contract with the Jasmine Perfume Company, giving them the right to use his name on their leading brand. That was his own... Oh, must I talk about it? Everything you tell me helps, Mrs. Van Dorn. Well, I forbid any more questions, Blackie. I don't think you have much say in the matter, Wilcox. Mrs. Van Dorn. I'm her lawyer, but... Blackie, and I refuse to let her be questioned, by you or by anyone else. So I think you'd better leave. Here's the door. Oh, thanks. It's hard to see it when it's open like that. But I think I can find it. I'm sure you can. Come on, Mary. Oh, I'm practically out, Blackie. Oh, well. Goodbye, Wilcox. I'll see you again. Not if I can help it. You won't be able to, Wilcox. And uh, Mrs. Van Dorn... If your lawyer doesn't get off his high horse, maybe I'll never find out how your husband was killed on that wooden one. Are we driving out to meet Black at the merry-go-round, Inspector Faraday? No, Miss Wesley. I want to get my facts from you, alone. Oh. If Black were along, you'd do nothing but confuse me. Well, we'll be at the carousel in a minute. Yes, we will. It's around the bend and right down this road here, about a uh, hundred yards. Yeah, yeah. That much I know. Now, tell me just what happened when you and Blackie were riding in the park last night. Well, Blackie and I were riding along in a hansom cab. Yeah? It was uh, just about this time, about 2 a.m. As we got about here, we suddenly heard the carousel organ playing a wolf. And we... Just like now. Hey, the music is playing. Yes. 
All right, then what happened, Miss Wesley? Well, uh, we pulled up almost in front of the merry ground. Like this, Miss Wesley, huh? Uh, yes, like now. And through the trees, we could see the lights of the carousel. Like now. Hey, this is crazy. Those lights are on. And at 2 a.m. Come on, come on, let's have a look. Right. Uh, the path to the carousel is right through this hedge here. Yeah, I see it. Come on. I'm coming, Inspector. Okay. Now, after you heard the music and saw the lights and came out here to have a look at it, just like now, then what, Miss Wesley? Well, uh, we stood here like this and watched the carousel go round and round, just like now. Yeah, and then? And then, all of a sudden, we noticed a body on one of the horses. Inspector! Just like now! Now back to Boston Blackie. Blackie and Mary Wesley are riding in a handsome cab in the park at two o'clock in the morning when they find the carousel, organ playing, lights ablaze, and revolving slowly with a dead man riding one of the horses. The dead man is John Van Dorn, well known horseman. Investigation reveals no clues nor uncovers the major suspect. That night, Faraday takes Mary out to the carousel to go over the scene of the crime, only to discover the organ playing, the lights blazing, and another dead man riding a wooden horse. As we return to our story, Faraday and Mary are standing by the carousel while Faraday's men inspect them. There's got to be fingerprints somewhere. Well, Inspector, have you got troubles? Blackie! Blackie, you get away from here. Sorry, Faraday. I must be part vulture or something. Every time I hear on my radio that a body has been found, I have to come and have a look at it. Well, look at it then, and leave. There it is, on that horse on the merry-go-round. Oh, Blackie, it's Peter Carson, the man who owns the carousel. So I see. How was he killed, Faraday? Shot, the same as Van Dorn. Uh-huh, and I suppose you know why he was killed. I do. He must have seen who killed Van Dorn. Faraday, sometimes you amaze me. You're right for once. But do you know who killed him? Sure. The same guy who killed Van Dorn. Right again, Faraday. But you haven't the slightest idea who killed Van Dorn, have you? No, I thought not. All right, all right. So I'm a dope. Do you know who killed Van Dorn? <laughs> do I know who killed Van Dorn? Well, do you? Well, no. The register downstairs said Harry Wilcox's office was 1307. That must be this way, Mary. Okay, there's the door. Good, come on. Woo! That was some climb up those stairs, wasn't it? Could have been worse, Mary. This is a 36-story building, you know. Could have been better. The elevators could have been running. <laughs> Not at this hour. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll have to pick the lock. Blackie, you sure it wouldn't be a lot easier if we just see Harry Wilcox in his office tomorrow morning? I've had one brush with Wilcox already, Mary. It's enough to let me know that the Van Dorn lawyer is not the cooperative kind. Okay. Man, that did it. And the door's open. Ladies first. Uh, uh, when walking into a dark office, the rules are reversed. <laughs> All right. Here, you take the flashlight. Got it. You can turn it on now. I'll close the door. All right, flashlight's on. Now what? Now shine it around the room. What I'm looking for will probably be in Wilcox's safe, I hope. Mm, me too, but what if he doesn't have a safe? You say such awful things, Mary. Yeah, don't I just? Oh, there it is, Blackie. Next to that filing cabinet there. Good. It's an easy kind to open. Aren't they all to you? Bring the light over. <laughs> all right. Now what? Just hold it and be quiet. I want to hear the tumblers drop. I'll be quiet. There's one. Good. Shh. There's two. Better. Shh. Three. Marvelous. And open. Terrific. I'm mm without. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's see inside. Not much in the safe. A few, uh, ledgers, a few papers. Uh-huh. Let's hope one of those papers is what I'm looking for. Hey, what are you looking for? You'll hit me on the head if I tell you. What? And break a perfectly good flashlight? What are you looking for? I don't know. You... You don't know? No. Something. Oh, dear. Anything. 
that could help me. Hmm? Hey. Hey, this might be interesting. What is it? It's from Dawn's contract with that Jasmine perfume firm. What contract? The contract giving them the right to use his name on their perfumes. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll have a look at this. Yeah, signed by McDonald and Lester Ronson, president of Jasmine. Cancellation clause, cancellation clause. Where are you? Maybe there isn't one. No, no, there isn't. But here's one just as good, a ridicule clause. A ridicule clause? What does that mean? It means that if McDonald ever did anything that might hold him up to ridicule, this contract would automatically be canceled. Well, what would be the purpose of that, Blackie? I'm not sure, but I can guess. And my guess is that... Ronson bought the Vendorn name because it had some high society significance. In the event the name became connected with anything ridiculous, it would naturally have no value to Ronson. Well, I'm very surprised to myself, but I do understand. First thing tomorrow morning, I am going to see Mr. Ronson. Maybe he manufactures perfumes. But there's something about all this that doesn't smell so good to me. <laughs> My secretary says you want to see me, Blackie. What about? Oh, nothing much, Mr. Ronson. I just want to know what you know about John Van Dorn. I don't know much. I, I merely paid him for the use of his name on my products. Yes, I know that. And, uh... Yeah. I see you're turning out new bottles for your stuff, Mr. Ronson. Those nice drawings on your desk. Oh, well, these, uh, these are just planning roughs. Hey, I, wait a minute. I... Uh, don't put those away. Seems to me the name on the label wasn't from Dawn. Uh, it was Winston, wasn't it? Yes, yes, but that means nothing. It means something to me, Ronson. Your contract with Van Dorn was canceled by his death, wasn't it? So your perfumes are now to come out under a new name, Winston. What was wrong with Van Dorn? Well, I, I might as well tell you. You'll find out anyhow. The, the Van Dorn name didn't sell. Oh, so you had a contract with Van Dorn. It couldn't be canceled. His name wasn't selling your product, so you killed him. Or you'd go broke. No, no, I, I didn't kill him. But you did want to break your contract with him. Yes, you? but, but I, I didn't kill him. All I tried to do was involve him in a scandal so I could exercise the, the ridicule clause in my contract. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Now, now, now look, Blackie, I, I'll tell you just what I did. About time. Go on. Well, Van Dorn was a famous horseman. And I thought the city would get a good laugh if they saw him riding a wooden horse on a merry-go-round in full riding habit. That's exactly what I figured. You put him on that horse, huh? Yes, yes. I, I had him come to my house just after his daily ride in the park, and I, I drugged him. And then at midnight, I put him in my car and drove to the carousel in the park. Carried him to one of the horses and then shot him? No, no. B -b Believe me. After he was on the horse, I turned on the carousel lights and started the organ and, and put the carousel in motion. And then? And then I, I started to leave, to, to call a newspaper and give them a hot tip for a picture. Uh, society's leading horseman on a wooden horse, you know. But there was a shot, and Van Dorn slumped, and I knew the bullet had hit him. I got scared and ducked into the bushes and left. Did you see who fired the shot? No. It, and believe me, all I wanted to do was involve Van Dorn in a scandal so I could cancel my contract. All right, Ronson. That takes care of you for right now. But right now, I've got to take care of someone who wanted to cancel Van Dorn. Yes? Oh, it's you. Yes, it's me, no, Mrs. Van Dorn. Uh, no, don't I... tell me I can't come in, because no, I am in. Look, now, you, you can. Who is it, Blanche? It's that Boston Blackie again. Blackie, I thought I told you to stay away from us. Your hospitality was so charming, Wilcox, I just couldn't resist another sample. I'll give you a sample of something else if you don't get out of here. Don't make me laugh. Say, Wilcox, um, you have an office, you have a home of your own. Why is it every time I see you, you're here with Mrs. Van Dorn? Why, I... Harry, could... please. It's Harry, is it? And I think you call her Blanche, don't you? Well, that happens to be her name. I know, and Blanche is the part of her name that you don't intend to change, huh? Do I hear wedding bells? Now, look here, Blackie. If you're suggesting that Harry killed my husband, that's absolutely What most... I do mean to suggest is that your husband was killed a little after midnight last night. And Wilcox, where were you at that time? At my club. Can you prove it? Yes, I can prove it. I... Oh, now who's that? I have a rough idea... Let the rough idea in, Mrs. Van Dorn. You can't keep him out. 
Oh, Inspector Parrot, hey? Are you back again? Come in. Thanks. Now, look, Mrs. Van Dorn. I... Blackie, what are you doing here? Same old Faraday, same old question. I've got a suspect for you. Wilcox. Wilcox? Oh, no. He couldn't have killed Van Dorn. The coroner says Van Dorn was killed sometime between midnight and 2 o'clock this morning. I checked and found Wilcox was in the card room at his club during those hours. Faraday, you're improving. Keep it up, and one of these days I won't even know you. Let's hope that soon. I demand you apologize to Mr. Wilcox Blackie. Okay, Wilcox. I'm sorry. But, Faraday, can I see you a moment alone? What about? An idea just got me that may get you a murderer. afraid in the park so late at night, Mrs. Van Dorn. It is rather dark and frightening, isn't it, Becky? Yes, it is. Oh, here's the path I want. Where are we going? To the merry-go-round, Mrs. Van Dorn, if you don't mind. No. Why should I? Well, I thought you wouldn't mind seeing it if you could help find your husband's killer. Now, oh, here we are. Awfully quiet out here, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. You know, Mrs. Van Dorn, when I get off to any place like this where it's quiet. My mind plays awfully strange tricks on me. Sometimes I... <laughs> well, I even seem to see things that aren't there. Oh? Psychiatrists would say that it was my subconscious mind working, I suppose. Uh, yes, it's very interesting. For instance, last night I was standing in front of this carousel. Mm. The lights were blazing. They were? Yes, the lights were on. And... Oh, Blackie, look. Look, Mrs. Vendon? At what? The lights of the carousel are on. I don't see them. But you must. Every light is on. Every light. No, Mrs. Vendorn. You're imagining. No, I'm not. The lights are on. The lights aren't on, Mrs. Vendorn. But they are. Where, and, and the merry-go-round is turning. At two o'clock in the morning? How could that be? Well, it is. And, it, and there's the music. Can you hear that? You, you do hear no, it, don't you? No, no, I don't, Mrs. Vendorn. But listen, the sound. music is playing. Now, look, the merry-go-round is turning. Mrs. Vendorn, control I yourself. I see it. I see it. I tell you, and I hear it. It was just like this when I followed Mr. Ronson out here. Mrs. Van Dorn. I stood here. I stood here and watched. He put John on the horse. And the carousel wound around and went around. And when John came around one time, I shot him. I shot him. Mrs. Van Dorn, you don't He was you... riding that wooden horse up and down, up and down. There he is again. Just like he was then. All right, Faraday. You can get off that wooden horse. You talk. Along with you here at two o'clock. Oh, Blackie, this is the life. Oh, no, no, Mary, this is the park. Oh, you still. And the last time we came here, we got mixed up in a murder. And how we were mixed up. And Blackie, I still don't know why the carousel owner was killed. Well, Mrs. Van Dorn murdered the carousel owner because she thought he might have seen her shoot her husband. And he might have at that. Oh, but now, wait a minute. Let's go back a little bit farther. How did Mrs. Van Dorn know Ronson was bringing her husband out here in the first place? Her husband had called her from Ronson's, and when he didn't show up along about midnight, she went over there. She saw Ronson carrying her husband out and followed him. Well, if she saw that, why didn't she tell it to the police afterward? Because, my dear, she was a killer, and she felt the less said, the better. Blackie. Blackie, the music's playing again. I know. But, but it's, it's... I know. It's 2 o'clock again, but it's not 2 o'clock in the morning, Mary. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. Oh. Blackie. Let's go on the merry-go-round. Just you and I. Well, Please. all right, Mary. But why? Uh, why? Um, Why? Well, I don't know exactly. Oh, yes, I do. Maybe it's because I want people to say that we're going around together. You see? Mm -hmm. 